Activated. Analyzing. Update complete. What's up, Lore Masters? Today we take a look at the Miranda class. So let's just get into it. The Miranda-class starship was the quintessential workhorse of the Federation. The class itself would have multiple variants that would allow for the ship to do anything from operations, to cargo transport, to military engagements. Honestly, in a way, the vessel reminds me of the Klingon Bird of Prey. There are so many different variants and uses that exist within the class that it's likely we don't know all of them. The ship was virtually used for everything that the Federation requested of Starfleet. Well, I mean, for its size and design. They didn't try to make it into a battlecruiser of epicness like the idiotic Klingon Empire did. We first see the Miranda class in the late 2260s, though given how well known it was during that time, it's possible the ship went into service in the early 2260s, if not the late 2250s. During the 23rd century, the Miranda would be among the frontline ships for Starfleet, assisting the Constitution class and later Excelsior class in operations. In the 23rd century, the Miranda would be an extremely lethal ship. The battle between the Reliant, a Miranda class, and that of the Enterprise, a Constitution refit class, would show how deadly this ship could be. With the Enterprise's shields down, the phasers of the Reliant would rip into its armor to a devastating effect. However, as time progressed into the 24th century, as the ship would seemingly become mass-produced to an unreasonable degree, the vessel itself would become a jack-of-all-trades and seemingly lose the prestige that it had. During the Dominion War, the armor of the Miranda class would be made of pure explodium. Starfleet Command would not care about anyone that was stationed on the Miranda class. Mirandas would be the O-Births of the Dominion War. During the Dominion War, the Miranda class would serve as an escort for larger ships and have a prominent role within several battles. While the Dominion War variants would be upgraded and be somewhat of a threat to Dominion vessels, a large number of Miranda ships would be lost in the Dominion War. As stated, though the power and efficiency of the Miranda class would fade, it still served in major battles of the Dominion War and was key to assisting the Federation in winning that war. Among the many battles that it was a part of, it includes the First and Second Battle of Chintaka and the Battle of Cardassia. Now there is a piece of lore about the Miranda class that confuses me. Honestly, it's hard to make heads or tails of it when you research into it because it makes little sense with TNG and DS9 continuity. The Miranda class, uh, at least some variants of it, are made by a company called the Yo-Yo Dine Division. Now, this would make sense in the original series since real money existed and we still had a semi-capitalistic economy. That Starfleet would outsource the creation of its ships is logical. However, in the next generation, they go out of their way to point out that the Federation no longer worried about scarcity, that it didn't exist. The Federation was a utopia, after all, with no need or want and then take into account that the Federation was effectively a communist- oh. Oh wait, you guys hate it when I say that. Especially when you take into account that the Federation has a socioeconomic model that is structured upon common ownership of the means of production, and the absence of social classes, money, and the state. But it's definitely not communism. Again, I mean an entity that has no scarcity would have no need for the Yo-Yo Dine division and would simply make its own ships. And we're not even talking about older models. No, TNG era and DS9 era Miranda class ships were built by the Yo-Yo Dine division. Ironically, this won't be the first time we see a company building Starfleet assets either. Which is spoilers for the future, just so you're aware. But I mean, honestly, why would the Yo-Yo Dine division exist? I mean, is it there because of tradition? I also found very little, even in beta canon, for the existence of the Yo-Yo Dine division. We don't really know a lot about it at all. But that continuity gaff aside, looking back at the ship itself, here's an interesting fact. To my knowledge, we never hear the words Miranda class. At least I don't believe so. We definitely don't in the original series for sure, and the term seems to be derived from what is observed on computer panels in the show. It's possible it was said during TNG or DS9, but I never was able to find any reference. The Miranda class has a similar design to the Soyuz, because apparently those are different. While there's really no alpha cannon that I could find that verifies this, the Miranda class feels like a poor man's constitution. A ship that is highly modifiable, made with parts from the constitution, but cheaper and easier to mass produce. It's my personal belief that this idea was so successful the same thing was done with the Nebula and Galaxy class ships. Unlike other designs, the Miranda class had a single primary hull consisting of a saucer section. However, interestingly enough, the bridge module would be different from that of the constitution this probably being reflective of the multi-role aspects of the vessel. 
Memory Alpha states that there are at least five different hull configurations of the Miranda class. As I stated, I would be very surprised if there weren't more. On XS3 Scientia, it states that we have the Miranda, Miranda 2, and Miranda 3 variants. There are some other variants in Beta Canon, and I'll discuss that a little bit later. There would be two nacelle pylons connected on the underside of the ship, which would connect to the warp core, allowing the ship to enter into warp. Depending on the variant, different Mirandas may or may not have the quote-unquote roll bar, or superstructure. It would seem from the research that I gathered that the roll bar, again also called a superstructure, was mainly used for ships that would have a more military role. Though some have theorized the module could be traded out, something that I'm not able to independently verify. The bridge was basically the Constitution's bridge just dressed up because God forbid they ever make a new set in a movie. The bridge of the Miranda class would share similar qualities of that of the Constitution in some designs. However, depending on the variant, the actual bridge would be outfitted quite differently. Entire stations, consoles, walls, and displays would be put in different sections or different layers. Because they can afford to change out sets, but not fix a mechanism to make the Klingon Bird of Prey wings move up and down. At least when it comes to TNG, God forbid you have a different set in a movie. When we see the insides of the Miranda, its decks, quarters, the engineering bay itself, and other areas, it's really reflective of an updated Constitution design, a Constitution refit. It also looks similar to that of a Galaxy class. It's unlikely that the decks of the very first Miranda class ships looks like this, however. Given the close relation to that of the Constitution, it's likely that when the Constitution would go through refits, so would the Miranda class, and thus when we see the Miranda class finally, it would look like a refit version of the Constitution. Refit variants would have modern-looking engineering sections with more advanced warp cores. Both the shuttle bays and transporter rooms would additionally be reflective of what we see in the 24th century. The Miranda class, unlike most other vessels, would have two shuttle bays, with one shuttle bay being numbered 1 and the other shuttle bay being numbered 2. I'll let you guys try to figure out why they did that. The ships would generally come standard with six dual phaser banks located on the primary hull with three mounted to the top and three on the bottom. You would also see two single phaser emplacements mounted just beneath the impulse engines. The roll bar superstructure would also contain two phaser emitters that would be able to fire forward and to the sides. The ship would additionally have two forward and aft photon torpedoes. During the Dominion War, the Miranda would see upgrades to its warp drive, nacelles, and weapons. The ship would have weapons that would be comparable to that of the Nebula class ships. Additionally, it would move from the toss scale warp drive to that of the TNG and on. The ship itself had a crew of up to 220 officers, both commissioned and non-com, though non-military variants could handle less than 30 crew members. The ship is 277 meters long, 173 meters wide, and 65 meters high. As a point of reference, the Defiant is rumored to be 170 meters long, 134 meters wide, with a height of 30 meters. Because I need to pad out this script to make it the longer format I've discussed and get that wondrous YouTube money. In Beta Canon, there would be several different variants that could be found in both licensed and unlicensed materials. Trek Yards does a wonderful breakdown that includes these variants, so definitely check them out, I'll link them below. An interesting and fun fact, the Miranda was originally going to be the Avenger class, a ship that was built with the most advanced weapons that were not only advanced for Starfleet, but for the Alpha and Beta Quadrant. When they were looking at a design of what to put up against the Enterprise, the initial thought is to make a full-on warship. But, you know, I, I guess the creators and designers of Star Trek and the Star Trek ships, the people who made it, didn't realize that it was always a peaceful organization with no warships. I hate it when the people who make the shows know less than their fan base on what their art is. According to Memory Alpha, ships that carried the name that were Miranda include Antares, Bretagne, Lantry, Majestic, Nautilus, Reliant, Saratoga, uh, the Saratoga again, Shirkar, Sitak, Tian An Min, and Trial or Trial. For those who want to be on Jeopardy, the Miranda class appears four times in the Star Trek film, four times on TNG, 23 times in DS9, and once in Voyager. But not in Enterprise and Discovery. You know, the prequels, where it's more likely to be. There's more to the Miranda class, and all of it is in Beta Canon, or even worse than Beta Canon. But it is not only a lot of information, but pretty contradictory. I'll be opening up a series that delves into Beta Canon in the near future, and the Miranda will definitely be on that list. That aside, what do you guys think about all this? Do you like the Miranda? What are your thoughts on its mass use? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next. Lore Reloaded. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is actually the YouTube cut. If you like to see the Lore Reloaded producer's cut, 
which includes actual clips of the shows with more videos to help with context? Consider becoming a patron for as low as a dollar a month. Not only is there more content for you to see, but patrons get to see these videos a full two days in advance. If you're interested in seeing it but don't want to become a patron, then head over to LoreReloaded.com. The Lore Reloaded Producer's Cut will be uploaded a full day in advance before coming on YouTube. Lore Reloaded is completely fan-funded and relies on viewers like you. Thank you so much for your consideration.